Hi there, it's Troy. I hope your shoemaking is going well. Zephania had a little problem here, so I wanted to share this all with you this morning. If we take a look here, you'll see that there's this gray and darker gray cross-hatching pattern happening. This happens to be because what Zephania has designed here is a shoe where the last is the exact same dimension as the shoe. So the shoe wasn't made larger. We usually want to start by making our last bigger to represent the volume of the walls and the sole of the shoe and then working on top of it. But we usually use a scale or transform scale in the class in order to give a shoe that's very sharp and easy to work with. But another way of doing this is working with the offset. Now I'm going to close the eye on our last and remember to name these really well so we know what's what. You'll notice that I've used make solid here several times, but that's one of the things we're going to need to do here as well. You'll notice that this shoe, we can see the insides. and The white is our outside color, and the red is our inside color. So what we need to do first here is edit make solid. Remember that every time we do edit make solid, it closes that up. So if I close my eyeball on it, it'll go into invisible mode here. And that should show me exactly what the shoe is looking like in invisible mode. So you'll see it there. I can see that I have one outside shell. Everything looks good. So the next thing I want to do is make this larger. To do that, I'm going to go to Select. I'm going to press Control a or Command-A, depending if you're on Mac or PC. Edit. And you'll notice that we have Offset right next to Extract and Extrude, which are very similar commands. Now what Offset does is it literally tries to make this bigger by about 3 millimeters or 5 millimeters here. 5 millimeters is just fine. Now you'll notice that it isn't exactly solid, my new version, but that's okay. We'll fix that in just a minute. You'll notice that I have some holes in the toe here, and that might cause us a little havoc. But I'm going to say this is okay for now, and now I'm going to tell it to work on this a little bit differently. So now that my drawing has an offset shell, you notice that I have two different shells here. If I close my eye on that, I still have the inside version of my shoe and the outside version of my shoe. This is a very difficult problem for it because we have two different versions of the shoe at the moment. So one of the things that we can do here, if we come underneath edit, is to separate the shells. What separate shells does is it tries to take all of the different places and different units and pull them apart. Now this worked okay, but you're going to notice that it gave me four different versions of that shell. That has to do with the craziness going on in the toe down here. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to figure out which shell is which. Drawing one should be the outside. That's great. That's the one we're going to work with. The other three, I'm just going to close the eyes on so we don't see them anymore. So I can work on my drawing shell just that one. You notice there's holes, you notice there's a little few problems, so we usually do this the other way. But, if I go make solid at this point, it should close these all up. Hopefully it won't crash. Sometimes with a lot of different holes it will cause the problems, the program to crash. Came through pretty well here. You'll notice that there's now some artifacts we like to call these, or these scars or areas that are a little bit different. Remember that we have our select smoothing tools and sculpting tools, excuse me, to work those out. So you can come in here and sculpt those out very easily. You'll notice that it has created a whole new layer here. So the two layers that interest us greatly at this point are the casual last and the drawing shell one solid. Now I usually come in here and change the name of this to shoe so I know that that's my final shoe. I might want to keep these other layers around to do other things with later or since I know that these three are kind of just different shells I can just delete that. I always have my drawing shell to fall back on. Now, last step is to subtract the last from the shoe. So I'm going to turn the eyeball on the last back on. And this is, remember, a little trick that we have to do. First we have to click on the shoe, and hold down the shift key, and click on the last. That means we have the shoe and the last layer selected at this point. Now, it should give me the possibility to bool here, but you notice it has no boolean option. That's because I'm in the analysis menu. If I come back to the edit menu here, when I have two things selected, it gives me bool. So make sure you're in the edit menu 
and make sure that you have the two layers selected, with, but that you've selected the shoe first. If you accidentally select the last first, it's going to select the shoe from the last, and we'll be left with the ankle area up top here. Whereas if we do it this way, shoe, then last, you're saying take the shoe and subtract the last from it. So I'm just going to click Boolean difference. This is going to take a minute. Remember, this is usually pretty complicated math. And I'm going to scroll around, and I have a little bit of a problem here, but I'm going to go ahead and accept that and see if I can clean it up. You'll notice that sometimes when we bool things out, it doesn't subtract the inside very well. Well, this has to do with how shells are created and how it sees different objects. So I'm going to see if the program can let me select this, and once I have that together as one single shoe, if I come down here into invisible mode, it does a pretty good job at showing me exactly what's going on there. And for some reason it didn't carve it all the way out. And I wish that uh, this didn't happen in MeshMaker, but again, MeshMaker is a free program, which makes it hard to use at times. So with that, I'm going to come back in here to separate shells in with the shoe selected and the eyeball open. And it's going to tell me that it hasn't found any multiple shells but I am going to try just selecting different objects here. Let me make sure that I'm not seeing the shoe. Nope, just the shoe. You notice that I can click on this and it should be showing me something, but it's not. And this is just because of the fact that it's not a professional program. I'm gonna tell this to make solid one more time. This often helps and see what it gives me at that point. So yeah, it's, you'll see that it gave me a lot more artifacts here. Kind of nasty. have to smooth those out in just a minute. But now with this selected, let's see what I've got here. I'm going to make sure that the shoe is there. The drawing is here. The drawing is there. Okay, I'm still getting that nasty inside. But if I come in here to select, you'll notice that it's going to let me select just that inside. And let me see what happens if I delete that. I'm going to press Command A. Command A. Edit. Erase. Or let's we'll discard it and see what happens here. So you'll notice that I somehow just had that weird top layer in there. But what I came in to do was I selected it by clicking on it, pressed Command A because it was a separate shell and told it to discard it, and voila, I have an open and empty shoe. Now you'll notice that I have some pretty nasty artifacts here. The edges are not very nice. We call that nasty artifacts, or difficulties with artifacts. So one of the things I'd probably want to do just to finish this shoe up before sending it to printing is to grab my sculpt tools, make sure I have my layer selected, and with my sculpt tools, I would choose one of my two smooth brushes. Usually the shrink smooth works here, especially for these kind of dangly hanging off pieces like we're seeing there. So I'm going to just bring my size down quite a bit and paint those out until they go away. And just a little bit of work here. You can smooth things out fairly nicely and make it you know, 3D printable. Remember your printer is going to not see a lot of that because the detail is so low, but at the same time you know, garbage in, garbage out is what we usually say. If you send it garbage don't be surprised when it prints out garbage. So we're just going to clean up those edges a little bit. I hope this helps. I know that that Boolean difference is not always the easiest thing to do, but remember tricks like make solid and selecting shells, and you'll sh probably get it down pretty pat. If you have any questions, let me know. Have